Playing tennis with Elton John is no different than Clint Eastwood, Merv Griffin at the time, Johnny Carson. Then I played in a series of celebrity tennis tournaments and my partner was the Secretary of State, who I drilled in the back of the head with about 120 mile an hour surf. Um, and I got myself arrested, which is lovely. Um, you got arrested for hitting him in the back? I got detained. Um, I wouldn't say arrested, I got detained. What's something that's keeping you up right now in the industry? Everything changes by 5%. All of the new frauds are not, not brand new, but they change by 5%. Insightful conversations with the people shaping the title and escrow industry. Hosted by Close Simple co founder Bill Svoboda and brought to you by Close Simple, the trusted name in closing communication with automated text messages, custom branded email, and the pizza tracker for title timeline. And now, closing talks. Well, hey, Bill, thank you so much for hopping on here with me today. How are you doing there? And where are you right now? I am in my home office in Southern California, in Cowan Heights, California. Um, another beautiful day here. So great place to be. I feel like every day is amazing in California. Well, we have other issues, but that's today is today is a beautiful day. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes here to hop on with me. You know, I've known you for for a few years now, and. When I thought about who to bring on this show, I always want to think about interesting people in the title and escrow industry that maybe we have a public image of who they are, but there's so much more to who that person is that maybe we don't hear about from the stage. And when I think about that type of person, you're one of those because we were just actually at the Texas Land Title Association Conference. You're the current president of Alta right now. So you got the stage, you were speaking. And I've known a bit of your backstory, like what you did before title, but you said something from the stage that just my ears perked and I couldn't believe the moderator didn't ask a follow-up question. So today what I want to do is I kind of want to just hear a little of the Bill Birding story. And obviously we're going to talk a little title too, but I want to just let people hear Bill Birding behind the scenes, like what you did before title. Sounds great. Well, here was what I remember from Texas Land Title Association Conference. This is what you said. You said, oh yeah, back in the day, I was playing tennis with Elton John. And then the conversation just went on. And I thought to myself, you, Bill Birding, played tennis with Elton John. Now, I've known that you've done some things before getting into the title and escrow industry. And I always like to say, you don't find title, title finds you. I want to hear that story. but. To start off with, what is it like to play tennis with Elton John? Um, I got in early uh, in my in my life with a uh, company called John Gardner's Tennis Ranch, and I played with celebrity after celebrity after celebrity. So playing tennis with Elton John is no different than Clint Eastwood, um, uh, Merv Griffin at the time, uh, Johnny Carson. Uh, I have played with celebrity after celebrity after celebrity. And then I played in a series of celebrity tennis tournaments. And my partner was the Secretary of State, Alexander Hay, um, who I drilled in the back of the head with about 120 mile an hour surf. Um, and I got myself arrested, which is lovely. Um, you got arrested for detained. hitting him in the back? I got detained. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say arrested. I got detained by Secret Service for, for blasting our... Uh, uh, Secretary of State in the head, which is not the coolest thing I've ever done, but um, he moved when he was not supposed to move. So I'm looking at it as his fault. Obviously, um, it's his fault. Yeah. But I, I was really lucky. I mean, with I, I remember playing with Charles Schultz from Peanuts. Uh, I played with so many celebrities and so many congressmen. And um, I played with John McCain. And when I was like 18 and we went into uh, a room and we were drinking because, you know, Arizona at that, that time was was like 18, 19 year old drinking age. So um, I had an opportunity to sit down with three or four hours with John McCain and listen to him talk about um, his time in Vietnam, which still to this day chills me. Um, I mean, what he did and what he went through was just absolutely unbelievable. So, 
Um, I was very fortunate. Uh, I was very fortunate. I went to college and played tennis. I went to law school and continued to play. And it's what paid for my, my education. And uh, then I went on to go practice law. So basically, at, at that point, I was litigating uh, doing a little bit of transactional work. And I had a client who came into my office and it was a husband and wife wanted to, lit, uh, wanted to uh, uh, get rid of their title company and just and to liquidate it. And I looked at it and I go, oh my God, this sounds so much better than what I'm doing practicing law. So um, I told them to both leave, go get separate counsel. And within 20, 30 days, I added a group of investors and uh, ended up in the title business. Let's go to the next kind of chapter of your life then. One one thing that I found interesting about you was the Ralph Lauren modeling. How did you get into that? Um, very similar to title. Um, fell into it. Um, I was on a beach in Southern California and they asked if I would do a photo shoot and I did. Um, and I not only did polo, but I did a few other brands as well. And uh, I think I'm going to regret this at all to one um, because I know they're looking for uh, old pictures in which I know where they are. So hopefully they don't find them. But uh, uh, I was able to do a handful of, uh, of uh, 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 photo shoots and it was fun and it paid good money and I was able to do it on Saturdays and Sundays. And um and then I did a handful of, of photo shoots, but then I also did a um, few catalogs. And I always joke, I was the, if there was 10 guys uh, on the photo shoot, um, all of which were coming out with swimwear, I would be the 11th guy on the very end. Um, I was just there to fill out and uh, fill out the, the, the photo shoot. But, you know, it's fun, it was fun. What was really, was pretty cool is that I was, uh, friends with a lot of people who uh, ended up working for, for Ralph Lauren on a more permanent basis. And for years and years and years and years, I would get uh, a, a box the size of a refrigerator um, and I would open it up and it would be nothing but polo clothes. So for, for years, I don't think anybody knew that I, did, I I'd never paid for clothes. It was very cool. That's amazing. You're like living my dream growing up. Everything in my closet was like polo, everything polo. You know, I got that little pony there and um, wow, that's just, that's amazing. So you kind of gave a little snapshot of how you got in the title there. Um, sitting in your law office one day, you met that couple. Talk to me about the transition from kind of this lifestyle of, you know, we talked about it actually at a conference, we were, we were chatting you know, you've just kind of life has come to you and you've really lived a full life. And even in title now, president of Alta, you are the V your VP and general counsel of Orange Coast, or what's your title there? Executive vice president, and general counsel. Executive. Yeah. yeah, executive vice president. But you know, you've achieved a lot of success here. Talk to me about the transition from kind of, you know, growing up doing law, side gigs, everything that way in the title and where you've really seen yourself going here because on a national level, you've, you've really helped this industry go to a new place. Um, I know you started with the California Land Title Association, but talk to me about that transition in the title. Um, when I bought a 50% interest in my company in Denver, um, the one thing that I promised myself that I would not do was act like I knew more than I did because I didn't know anything. I mean, I was... Now, I had a law degree and, and no real knowledge of what the hell I was doing. So um, I walked into our employees and said, look, I got no idea what I'm doing. Um, and the first day I, I moved our receptionist out and I worked as a receptionist. I worked as a runner. Um, I worked as um, a searcher, an examiner. Um, I was an escrow officer. Uh, or, or assistant and then an escrow officer. So for a number of years, all I did is every single job. And I was able to learn all of the jobs, maybe not be great at any of them, 
but certainly good enough where I understood them. I understood what, what people were doing, why they were doing it. And it was unbelievably beneficial. And then I decided I just didn't want to live in Colorado anymore. So I sold my interest in the company and then moved to California. And uh, I was going to take a couple of years off. And instead, Orange Coast Title decided to uh, reach out to me and I got incredibly lucky. And I've been there for 20 some odd years now. That's amazing. Well, I like it. You know, I think in this industry, it's one of those industries where you start, you can start at the bottom and really get to the top. There's not a lot of industries like that where you, you told the receptionist, hey, move aside. I want to learn this, you know, and that's really incredible. You have to know what every single person does because we're all a team. And I have to tell you, um, during my time as Alta president, I think the thing I'm most proud of is our industry in, in total how we've adapted to our new situation, how we have done more work than we've ever done before. Um, and we've done it with, with less people, but our people have been really, really working hard and we've modified our systems. And I just think that what we have done is amazing. And um, I don't want to sound you know, overly dramatic about it, but it is definitely something that um, it is amazing how great of industry we are, we, we are. And to be president of our trade association during this time is absolutely unbelievably uh, prideful for me and, and could not begin to tell you how many people have worked so hard and have reached out to, uh, uh, to me and to talk about our industry and how amazing we are, we have been as an industry. And I can't tell you how, how great it is to talk to members of Congress, uh, Fannie and Freddie, FHFA, and all that, and be able to look them in the eye. And they, they look me in the eye and it's like, you guys have stepped up and we have. And incredible time. I mean, it, it's what I have loved to be president, not in COVID, of course, but uh the fact that I, that I have been able to be a, be the president of our industry and of our trade association during the time while our industry absolutely killed it um, yeah. is amazingly prideful for me. So were you able to have any face-to-face conversations with people in Congress or was it all via Zoom during this, this last year? No, I've had, I've had some face-to-face, but it's only been recently. Okay. And what's it like? I think a lot of people, when we hear about you know, tie pack and things like that when contribute and think that we're actually doing, um, you know, getting in front of Congress, donating that way to lobby. What's it like to walk into the room with a Senator or a Congress person, you know, to actually kind of rally for this industry? What's that feel like? It's pretty special. Uh, I have, I have had the opportunity to meet with two vice presidents, uh, no presidents yet, but uh, you never really know. Uh, Secretary of Treasury, uh, many, many senators. Um, my my uh, favorite moment, I don't know if you remember, but a number of years ago, there was a guy who made a homemade helicopter and landed in the, uh, uh, just outside of the Senate chambers. And okay. they, they put us all into the basement because I was in there meeting with, uh, with congressmen. I walked in and there was John McCain. And I... I uh, went up and introduced myself and he goes, oh my God, we played tennis together. I said, yeah, we did. Yes, we did. And so we were there and Harry Reid at, at that point was uh, a Senator from, uh, from Nevada. And the three of us sat there and chit chatted for like two and a half hours. Amazing. Um, incredibly amazing. I, I was like, we talked about what it was like, uh, uh, when we played tennis together and, and all that, he, he didn't know who I didn't know my name, but he certainly remembered me and he remembered our night, um, which was, which was pretty cool. I like how that just comes full circle though, for you. And it's kind of like in life, there's never wasted opportunities. You know, there's like that motto life happens for you, not to you. And that's a prime example of it. Who would have known that in your younger days, you know, playing tennis, doing this, that would have led to that conversation and all to president and it all kind of just converges. Let me ask you this, Bill. Um, 
what's something that's keeping you up right now in the industry? Is there something that keeps going through your head? This last year has been crazy. The future, you know, uncertain. What are you thinking about that's keeping you awake at night? Is there something? Yeah, what's making me nuts is the fact that, um, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get this done. Um, I know I'm not going to get it done during my term as president, and I don't know if uh, we're ever going to get it done, but we've got a wire fraud problem that just sits out there and we try to work it and we're getting no traction. Um, and that's frustrating. Uh, there's just no doubt about it. That's frustrating. So uh, everything changes by 5%. All of the new frauds are not, not brand new, but they change by 5%. So all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, that's a little bit different. Like the one we're working through right now with mortgage, with a reverse mortgage fraud. Same basic scheme that we saw, but they've moved it five degrees over. And so we're seeing new types of, it's a new fraud that's happening out there. Yeah, I mean, it's always something new. Always something new. I just got a condo and you know, there's so much that you think about as you're thinking about that sum of money and you're just going, okay, kind of cross your fingers going, I hope, but, um, I'm glad to know that, you know, like that's something kind of high on your priority list there. Couldn't be any higher. Well, Bill, I really appreciate you hopping on here. You know, one of the things I wanted, like I said, when I started, I wanted to just kind of let people see a different side of Bill Birding than they always see on stage. We were going to talk a little of that title talk. We have to talk shop, you know, because this is title industry. Um, let me ask you this, though, kind of last question. Most fascinating person that you've met over the past few years, you know, going back to your days, hanging out with celebrities, is there one story, one person, one, um, one night, one day that kind of sticks out that you can kind of share with everybody as like, wow, that was something? It's a little embarrassing, but I'll, I'll do it anyway. Um, I was in Honduras diving and uh, uh, met this guy. Couldn't have been any cooler. We had a really nice time. Um, invites me to his boat. Um, met with him. His wife was stunning, just beyond stunning. And so I turned to him and I go, my God, whatever you do, you must do it very well. Um, and then I went back to our boat and I met these people, uh, Tim something, and his, he has wife Faith, and I guess they're in country music. I had never heard of him before in my life. They all just, everybody in the room just burst out laughing. Um, we probably spent four or five hours together and um, just had the best time. Uh, I think they were a little bit uh, happy the fact that I had no clue who they were and what they did for a living. I have had, I've met with a lot of celebrities, I've, I've hung out with them, but I got to tell you, I am so happy. I'm so proud of the people I've met in our industry. Um, and they're not just friends and friends for, uh, for business, but they're friends for life. And I have been incredibly blessed and I really look forward to the next several years as I uh, uh, stay with this industry, which I'm going to do. To be able to be president of our industry has been uh, an enormous um, uh, privilege. So I am very fortunate with that. And uh, I, to be able to continue to do this, I look forward to it. Well, thanks for all you've done. You know, like I, like I said, when we started, you're somebody that when I got into this and kind of got on the national level, you were somebody that I recognized and you've done a lot for this industry. So thank you for that. Thank you for taking some time here today. I'm sure anybody watching this, you know, they, they have a different side of Bill Birding now than they've known. The most I don't know fascinating if that's a good thing man. Or a bad thing, so the oh. most fascinating man in title right here. The most fascinating yeah, it's, man. It's, it's literally it's literally the Forrest Gump. Just sort of fall ass backwards into things. So I'm I'm very fortunate. Well, thank you so much and uh, I'll see you at the next title conference. So thank you. Look forward to it. Thanks much.